Hello there, and welcome to the Potent Puffin Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Thomas, and sitting here beside me is Kita, the Yale Count. Now, Kita has found her way onto her own Twitter account this week, and she has been very excited with that. She has been posting pictures of herself in the snow, barking at squirrels up trees. She's been giving her thoughts about barking at random leaves and the neighbor's dog when it goes outside. She also shows pictures of herself begging for cheese and hoping some eggs fall on the floor. So, if you want to see more about the everyday life of Kita the Elk Hound, go follow her on Twitter at Kita the Elk Hound. Now, given that, I used to see people make Twitter and Facebook accounts for their dogs. I still think Facebook accounts for dogs are lame, but Twitter accounts and Instagram accounts for dogs are cool. So I made a Twitter for Kita because I thought it'd be fun, and it has been fun. And it's something I'm going to keep doing because it is fun. And it's fun interacting as Kita on there sometimes. So go check that out. As I'm doing that, I really, you know, was thinking, you know, dogs are a good part of our life for a lot of people you know if you're a dog owner more than likely the dog's more than a pet to you it's part of your family so I'm gonna talk kind of about dogs this week because dogs are really cool creatures we got dogs and there are companions and some have unique purposes and some you know they have other unique purposes but not specific purposes and so you know one thing that got me kind of on this and prompted me to make Kita's Twitter account uh, was I did a little writing contest because I wanted to do it and check out this writing platform and kind of get back into writing some because I like to write I suck at it my grammar is awful but I like to write it's one way that I like to create stories so I wanted to try and get back into it because it's been a while since I've done any writing. So I did this whole writing contest and the prompt was to talk about a stray dog or how a rescue dog, you know, has changed your life in some way. And so what I wrote about was this pair of basset hounds that my dad had when I was a kid. And these basset hounds... Their name was Bonnie and Clyde. And the reason we named them Bonnie and Clyde was because my uh, stepmother found them running down a busy road one day. And the dog catchers got them. And she, you know, met with the dog catcher. They arranged, you know, a thing with the shelter. If, you know, these dogs weren't claimed in a certain amount of time, then she would be, you know, first on the list of. Uh, for a chance to adopt these these two dogs, and sure enough, I think the act the owner actually uh, just turned the dogs over. He didn't want to keep them. Uh, I think they found out who the owner was, but he didn't want to take ownership of the dogs. And so, my dad and my stepmom, since they you know got that priority because they spoke with the dog catcher before, you know they adopted these two basset hounds, and my dad was always like. Yeah, it just kind of seemed like they were running from the law because they were running from the dog catcher when they first, the first encounter we had with them. And so he's like, there's a boy and a girl. And he's like, it just made sense. He's like, there are two outlaw dogs, so we'll name them after a famous outlaw couple in Bonnie and Clyde. That was really cool. And these two dogs, they, they love to bark. They were non-stop with the barking, but they were so much fun. They were very loving dogs they were escape artists they could get out of any yard and we would find them running down the street but they'd always come back when you hollered at them and they were just really goofy because they're passing out so they had those those long faces and those really droopy ears and the, their eyes kind of drooped down they just had that that classic basset hound look to them and they were just really silly. Like Bonnie, we would always find her up on top of the picnic table in the backyard and things like that. You know, they were just goofy dogs, but they were a lot of fun. So I did a little 
little quick write up about them and how they came to be with us for this little contest. And I got links to that on the Facebook page and on Twitter if you want to check that out and read it. Yeah, so that's interesting. And then, you know, some of the best dogs are like that. They're, they're not the ones you go out and buy. I, I'm totally against uh, puppy mills. So I, I like getting puppies, but I'd rather find a reputable local breeder than go to somewhere uh, who's just pumping out puppies just to pump out puppies. Like, if I know someone whose dog got knocked up by the other neighborhood dog, that's likely going to be where I'm going to get my next dog. You know, but that's just me. But another great dog I had growing up, his name was Fred. I still have no idea what kind of dog Fred was. He had like the softest coat of fur though. And I don't know, he may have been part beagle because he kind of had a little be bit of beagle look to him, but he was a lot fluffier than a beagle. But he was about that same size too. He was a great dog. He was friendly. He. Yeah, he was just the, probably one of the best dogs I've ever known. And I don't really know whatever happened to Fred. I think he just kind of wandered off one day. But that was Fred, though, because he just wandered in one day. And then he would do that. He would, like, wander off for, like, a couple days and wander back. But when he was around, he was a great dog. You know, and he wasn't a dog that we were, like, we went out, like, hey, we're going to get a new dog. He just wandered in. And you know what? And he stayed around, and he was a great dog. So it's pretty neat how dogs do that. They kind of show up when they're needed. That's what I like about dogs. And, and just one weird dog. Uh, I say weird dog. It wasn't my dog, but it was someone we knew, their dog. It was a wiener dog, and it would stand up on its hind legs, kind of just straight up. And it would sit there for like 10 minutes just sitting on its back legs but this dog his name was flappers and the reason his name was flappers was he had a total of six paws so his back legs were normal and had just one paw on each leg but both of his front legs he had two paws on each leg and it was they when he ran they just kind of the extra paws just kind of like flapped and so they called him flappers it's kind of weird, and it just adds to the kind of like the comedy of the dog because he was a wiener dog. And yeah, it was, it was a weird dog. He was a good dog though. He was cool. I had a had a wiener dog as a kid. His name was Bullet. Uh, me and my brother decided to name him Bullet after the Creed song because that was a really popular song at the time, and it, it's a cool song. It you need to get pumped up. Bullet by Creed. That song will get you pumped up. So we named this this little wiener dog that we got after that song, and he was cool. I was, I'm not gonna lie, like I was a kid, I was really little, and hadn't really been around dogs too much when we had Bullet. So, like I'd get nervous like going outside to feed him, because I didn't, you know, want him to like jump on me and stuff. But eventually, I learned you know more about dogs, and Bullet was a special dog. <laughs> Uh, in the head, he was very special, but he was a great dog, a little wiener dog, and this dog once tried to attack a pit bull. I don't know, remember why, but the this pit bull that lived near us was coming around, and my 120 pound lab would not go near it. He would stay away. And this little wiener dog, he went and attacked this pit bull. And I'm like, you are a little wiener dog. Why are you attacking a pit bull? But he did, but. He knew that dog wasn't supposed to be around us, and he got it away. The same dog, man, we were out fishing one night, and he went to eat some of our catfish bait, because we were just using chicken livers, I think. But he bit into one that we had already hooked, and he got this hook stuck in the bottom of his mouth. And we ended up just having to... This, this is at like 10 o'clock at night, but luckily we were able to get a hold of the after-hours vet. Uh, they got him all taken care of. But he had a long recovery, but he did fully recover. But that was just one thing I remember. Well, yeah, he had a little rough life, but he was a great dog. He was a cool dog, but he was kind of special and slow in the head sometimes. You know, we go on to 
Now, like, there's other dogs I've had, but I'm not really going to go into every dog I've had because that would be a two-hour long episode because <laughs> there's so many dogs and they're all special and hold their own place. But I will go into Kita now because she's my current dog and she's a great dog. I love Kita. And the story behind us getting Kita was I was in A school and we just got orders to Kodiak. Brandy was already in Kodiak because she was staying with her parents while I was in A school. So we were basically just waiting to find out if we were going to be in government housing or not. Then we were, once we found out, we were going to try and get a dog because we knew we wanted a dog. But we wanted to know if we were going to be in government housing or not so we knew if there was going to be any breed or size restrictions before we uh, went out and got us a dog. Well, that was the plan I thought. But then one day, Brandy texts me while I'm in class and I get out of class and I look at my phone and she's like, I got a surprise and she kept sending these messages and I, like, honestly, I thought she was pregnant. Which would, would have made sense because it wasn't too far long after the Christmas break and so we were actually around so she could have been preg in early pregnancy. And so I was like, oh man, she is pregnant. But then she sent me a photo and she had this dog. I think Kita was, I think she was around 14 or 16 weeks old when Brandy got her. So she was still pretty puppy, but she wasn't that super little puppy that you often think of when you think of puppy. So... Yeah, that was kind of how we got Kia. Brandy just kind of didn't tell me anything. She just went out and got her. And she's turned out to be a great dog. And we're attached to each other, me and Kia. Like, she annoys us all when she likes to bark and when she occasionally gets out and doesn't listen to us to come back. But overall, she is a great dog. She is. She annoys Brandy more because Brandy tries to get her to come to bed at night. And she won't do it. And then I'll get home and she'll come to bed with me. Or like when I was on grave shift. So I slept at a different time than, Brand than everyone else. And I would go to sleep by myself. Kita would come in there and she would get in bed with me. But she won't do that with Brandy unless I'm in there too. It's, it's kind of funny. And it it makes Brandy upset because she wants Kita to do that. And come and cuddle sometimes. But it's interesting and... Yeah, I love Kita. She's a great dog. But, you know, if you got your dogs, you know, appreciate them. You know, any pet really, appreciate whatever pet you got because pets are special critters. And they help us through a lot, all kinds of stuff. You know, looking forward to what we got left with Kita because she's starting to get up there. She's about six years old now, I think. Yeah, so hopefully we got another good, you know, six to seven years with Kita, and she, yeah, you know, if you got any cool pet stories, let me know. I'd like to hear them, because pets are cool. You got an interesting pet like Flappers who has, you know, extra paws or something. Throw throw some pictures my way on Twitter. Or tag me. Show me. I want to see them. They're cool. Yeah, or just go on Twitter. Just tag me in all your dog photos. I want to see all your dogs. Because dogs are cool. And, yeah. I hope everyone, you know, enjoyed this episode. Talking about some cool dog stories I've had. And, you know, check me out next week. I'll be back. You know, check out the recent Paranormal Puffin that just came out on Friday. If you haven't already. Talked about the Wampus Cat and kind of how that got started and where it came from. So that's an interesting thing if you don't know much about it. And if you do know about it, you know, check it out still. Maybe you'll learn something new about the Wampus Cat. I'm getting a little more active on Buy Me a Coffee. So if you're familiar with that, go over there. If you're not, uh, look it up and find me on Buy Me a Coffee. I got all my drawings on there or most of my drawings on there. And they're 
actually scanned the images rather than the cruddy cell phone pictures that mess up the coloring. So you can check those out there. I got some posts that are uh, public, but most of the drawings and stuff, they are uh, for supporters and members only. But my membership is only $3 a month if you want to do that or just, just support. That's cool too. And you can see uh, some extra extra posts and yeah and just buy me a coffee it's cool and i'll catch everyone next week and have a good week y'all